back to the code. On lab number two in folder zero two, we're gonna do a little bit more on the view basics. But we're gonna go a little bit more into depth here. So the view instance is kind of the root of view. And this is where we start all of our view applications. We're always gonna have this syntax to start our applications. We're gonna have var app is equal to new view. And then you're gonna have an element, which is what view will attach itself to. Easy enough, that's how we get started with view. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is work with data. When we're working with data, we're gonna add that data object to our view instance. And here we have data, my variable one is something and my variable two is something else. That way this view instance knows that these variables are inside of its data object. So it has access to these two variables inside of its template, which is the div with the ID of app. Next, the other thing that we're gonna need to do is handle events. So this would be any of the HTML DOM events like click, key up, which we saw in the hello world, a form submission, and things like hover, mouse enter, mouse leave, all that good stuff are all things we can listen to in view. Now to handle an event, we have to define methods so that we know what to do when that event happens. So if we say click a button, then do something, where do we define do something? Well, we can do that inside of a methods object, which is new, we haven't seen this just yet, where we define functions, where we celebrate is gonna be a function and we alert celebrating. Now this whole thing is going to be the bulk of how our view applications are gonna look. We're gonna have an element, a data object, and a methods object. Pretty simple stuff, and that's really why I like Vue is, is the simplicity of the syntax. We'll go back over to VS Code, open up index.html inside of this O2 folder, and then I'm gonna go into my terminal, cancel this with Control C, clear it, and since we're right now in the 01 hello world folder, I'm gonna CD, which is choose directory. We're gonna go up one folder into the 02, and then I'll hit tab to autocomplete, enter. And now we're in the correct folder. Now I'll hit light server. And we are back. So I'll split that to the right, split that to the left, close a couple of things, clean that up. And there we go. We'll scroll down to our view instance, which we don't have just yet. Var app is equal to new view. And you might be wondering why I did var instead of const. Const is accepted in the latest browsers. If you wanna be fully backwards compatible right now, you can use var. At this point for the syntax, it doesn't matter as far as we're concerned. Element app, but we don't yet have an ID of app in our template. Here's the body of our HTML. On this section, I'll say ID is equal to app. And now view knows where to attach itself. And here, let's start adding in some data. We can remove that space right there. Let's say name is Chris Sevaleja. Username is my Twitter handle, Chris on code. Email Chris at scotch.io. And now we have three variables in our application. Up here, let's actually display those. We'll have a P tag. And inside of that, we'll have name, which is bound to that name variable. Now this double bracket is what's called interpolation, which is just a fancy word for saying, we're gonna take this data variable and we're gonna inject it into our application in the template right there. This makes reading our code very easy. We'll have a BR to break that line username for username, another BR and email for email. Save that, and now we have our three data variables showing up in our template. Now I wanna show you a little bit about the view instance. If we split this a little bit wider, we'll right click inspect, go into the console, and here if we type in app, which we said var app is equal to our view instance over here on the left, we're gonna say app, and that's our view instance right there that you can see. So this view instance is responsible for doing all that cool stuff where we uh, started typing into that 
input box and it automatically changed the data bound variable. And here you can actually see the three variables we had, name, email, and if you click there, it'll show up, name, email, and username. And we'll close this object. The cool thing we can do also is say app dot, and we can start changing out those variables right here. So if I said app dot name, and let's zoom in a little bit, app dot name is equal to Christopher Sevaleja. Notice as soon as I press enter, it's gonna reactively change inside of the template up here. So as soon as I press enter, immediately changed up there. Vue does a great job at listening for any changes to its data and automatically updating your template. None of that, oh, get that document element and then dot inner HTML to change it or anything like that. Or if you're using jQuery, you don't have to use dot text. Vue will handle all of that for us. Very nice. Now, what about handling events? We'll close that. Let's create a button here. A class is button is info. And these are two Bulma classes. And we'll say, do the celebration. Save that. Here is our new button. In our slides earlier, we saw that we could add a methods object here. And we'll have celebrate, which is equal to a function, alert, celebrating. Great. Now, if we click this, nothing's going to happen just yet. Vue knows we have a method called celebrate, but Vue doesn't know that we're supposed to use it when we click this button yet. We haven't attached that event to that button. Now in plain JavaScript, you would go get that button. You'd say const button is equal to document dot query selector button. And you'd have to make that identifiable. So you're not attaching it to different buttons. You want to make sure you target the correct button. So you probably want to do that as a class, but then you would do button dot add event listener click and you would say celebrate and then you would have to create a function celebrate and if you are wondering about a little bit of the syntax definitely check out our getting started with javascript course we go over this uh, a good amount uh, and alert celebrating now that's a lot of code that we don't really want to deal with and notice if we started to have multiple buttons multiple events would have to do a couple different buttons button two, button three, and button one. And then you'd have to do multiple event listeners for button one, two, and three. And you can see the JavaScript side of things just starts to become a mess. And the jQuery side is a little bit better, but still not the cleanest. Delete all that. And the way that we can bind this button to that new celebrate function that we have, that method is v on click celebrate. Easy enough. And we'll click that. We get our alert button. Very, very nice. Oh, and side note, something I didn't really mention earlier. If you're not using Light Server, you can just save and refresh right up here. And that will work just fine as well. You would have to open up that index.html in your browser as well. Now, what about if our method needs information from our data object? Well, we, instead of alert this dot celebrating, we'll say this dot name. And let's do a little ES6. We'll use the back ticks, which is the thing above the tab on your keyboard on the very left side. We'll do a template string here. So we're going to say this dot name is celebrating. Save that. Now this is going to reference this entire view instance. So when you say this, you're saying this view instance dot name, you're referencing this data name right there. So as soon as I click do the celebration, Chris Vallejo is celebrating. Very nice. So that's how you get data inside of your methods. And that's how you listen for an event, v on. We'll do a lot more with events during the course of this course. <laughs> so stay tuned for a little bit more next.